Today I'm going to talk about how neutrons decay, which is part of the weak force or weak interaction more properly, because it's not really a force in the traditional sense, because it doesn't cause objects to accelerate the same way. In the standard model, we have a theory where W bosons and and at some interactions, Z bosons, are involved with particle decay and weak interactions in general. In the case of a neutron, neutrons form when an electron joins with a proton and it forms a neutron. And then when a neutron decays, the electron gets ejected. Now, under the quark model, they say that the electron changes the in one internal quark inside the proton, which changes it to a neutron. But if we think of it in terms of just, we have an electron and a, and a proton, and we have an electron and proton together, and then electron and proton separated, it gives us a simpler picture that helps us understand how decay occurs. But a bit about problems with the W poson model. Okay, so we don't know the basic cause. We don't know how they're produced. And we don't know how the decay is initiated. Which are just basic physical problems of physics at the beginning of it. And then we have the energy conservation problem. A W boson, as it's been identified in experiments, has over 81 GeV, giga electron volts per C squared of mass, while the neutron only has a little over 939 MeV of mass. So where does this extra energy come from? This, it, it can't come from anything. There's no source for the energy of the W boson. And this, this is one of the biggest problems. You can't come up with a physics theory that violates the principle of conservation of energy. The only way around it is if you say, well, the W boson's so short-lived that it's essentially a quantum fluctuation. But in that case, it could only travel less than, or around 10 to the minus 18 meters, less than 200 times smaller than the proton. So the W boson model violates the speed of light limit because it assumes the W boson can somehow escape the proton and a positive electron outside the proton. But it doesn't list long, exist long enough. And even the mean lifetime we know of the W boson from experiments is only slightly longer than the mean lifetime allowed under the quantum fluctuation limit. So either way we look at it, the, the W boson range is so short, being 10 to minus 18 meters, versus the proton having a radius of, of around 10 to the minus 15 meters, uh, which is 100 times bigger. So if you have a w, w boson inside this huge proton, it's, it's not going anywhere. And if a W boson converts to an electron, while the electron is still inside the proton, it's still a neutron. You don't actually get the decay that this bogus theory is trying to account for. So how does it really happen? It happens because of interactions with quantum fluctuations. And if you've been following my videos, you know I'm a quantum field theorist and I try to figure out everything as quantum fluctuation interactions. And I do that because it works. Because quantum fluctuations exist. We know they exist because of the experimental evidence is overwhelming. And in the standard quantum fluctuation, the prototypical one, is an electron-positron pair. 
Well, if you can imagine a neutron and consider, even if it's not exactly a proton and an electron that are co-located, it has something electron-like still inside of it. So if you put a positron and electron pair next to an electron and a proton, if that positron got close enough, it could annihilate with the electron within the neutron and then cause the electron to be deposited outside the proton. And that's how the decay occurs. And it's a very simple model. You just have a neutron next to an electron positron. The positron decays with the neutron to convert the neutron to a proton and the electron gets deposited outside. It's about as simple as it gets. There's a whole bunch of interactions with quantum fluctuations that work this way, where you can get, instead of the quantum fluctuation annihilating with itself, part of it can annihilate with something else, an, an electron from somewhere. And in general, we can think of anywhere we have a free electron in space, that if a quantum fluctuation comes along and the positron, quantum positron annihilates with it, the electron will become free while this one's annihilated, and then the electron will take the energy and state of the electron that was annihilated, the new electron will. So in this way, any free electron actually gets quantum electrons redeposited places so an electron appears to jump around in space continuously. And this has actually been observed when we look at uh, what happens with electrons in so-called orbitals or clouds within atoms. The electron appears to randomly jump around and, and occupy a region of space rather than a single orbital shell. And this, these jumps occur because they're mediated by quantum fluctuations and quantum fluctuation interactions. So this model tells us what triggers the interaction. And what triggers the interaction is we have a quantum fluctuation interacting with a neutron that has the right energy. And the energy is important because the neutron has an excess 782 keV of energy. And that tells us where the energy distribution comes from of the electron that's been emitted. And the W's boson model doesn't explain where the energy distribution comes from. It just says it comes from and then a neutron gets the leftover. It's just magic. Well, nothing in physics can be magic. You, you have to have a reason for it. And the reason for it is that we have a continuum of energies of quantum fluctuations and then some of the continuum has a probability of interacting with the neutron to cause decay. And that probability function actually has a curve that's very similar to the black body spectrum because black body spectrum is also due to interactions with uh, quantum fluctuations when you have a black body emissions in, in empty space in the so-called vacuum. So we get the energy distribution because of the probabilistic interaction between the neutron and the the field of quantum fluctuations. And the math is fairly simple. The energy comes from the quantum fluctuation. So you have the 782 minus, say, 512 keV of energy of the quantum fluctuation, and it leaves 270. And 270 is close to the average energy of a electron that's emitted from neutron decay. And 512 is close to 511, which is the mass of the electron. 
So conveniently, the energy distribution peak of the, of the beta decay of these free electrons indicates that we have quantum fluctuations with the same energy as the electron that are principally interacting with the neutron to cause the decay in the first place. So the whole process is extremely simple. And if you have the energy coming on the front end from the quantum fluctuation, as it appears through this model, then there's no energy left for a neutron. In fact, you don't need a, new, uh, not a, neutron, a neutrino. You don't need a neutrino at all to explain neutron decay and other forms of beta decay that I'll discuss in another video. And I'll link to a paper below that, or a couple papers that talk about this theory so that you can study it some more if you like. And I'll do a few more videos about it, um, coming in at it from different perspectives. So we have an equation here where you have a neutron that comes in contact with the quantum fluctuation and you get a proton electron. You don't have this case where a neutron spontaneously decays on its own, spontaneously forming a W boson, and then the W boson magically jumps outside the proton, violating the speed of light limit, causing the neutron to decay to a proton, and the W boson decays to an electron. Instead, it turns out that when you have quantum fluctuations here, they have a long enough wavelength that the electron is deposited well outside the proton, um, 100 times the proton diameter or more, depending on the energy of the quantum fluctuation involved. So if we consider neutron decay as a quantum fluctuation interaction, it eliminates all the problems with the W boson model and explains how it really occurs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, please like and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and please share it with your physicist friends. And I also have written about this in my book, The Zero Point Universe, and some more in my books, The Hundred Greatest Lies in Physics, and Goodbye Quarks Theonium Theory, my particle theory book. And I'm a retired independent researcher, and if you want to help me out a little bit in my retirement, I, and by buying one of my books, I'd really appreciate it. And also I have a Patreon account if you'd like to help that way. So thanks for watching.